if you commit any mistake, you realize that, immediately apologize and move on. Don't, don't think about that during the interview. You can ponder on that after the interview, doesn't matter. But during the interview, make sure you have, a, you have your game face on and smile and just, just say your heart out. You'll be fine. Hi everybody, welcome to the first episode of our new series of Young Stars. And for the first episode and since Place from Season is right around the corner, we have the perfect guest with us and welcoming Shruti Sheru. Hi Shruti. Hey, hey. hi Nandini. Thanks for inviting me. It's Thank a pleasure. Thank you for joining. Pleasure is ours. What's up? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Just started working in MasterCard. Week three was just finished today. It's going great. We started it, we started data training. Like we started the training process. The first two weeks were mostly orientation. Now we started learning and maybe in a week or two we'll actually start working on projects. Hopefully. Awesome. So just to give you all a little bit of background. Uh, Shruti is a civil, civil engineer from NIT Warangal's 2017 to 21 batch. She's an amazing singer and an avid directioner. <laughs> and she was the placement coordinator for 2020 21. And now she is working as a data engineer at MasterCard. So she'll be talking to us about how her experience with virtual placements was on campus. And hopefully we'll get a little bit of insights from her experience to um, get some tips for our placement team. All right, so uh, Shruti, can you walk us through what the recruitment drive looks like in general? So most of the companies usually have three rounds. One is, the first one is the online test. The second one is usually a technical round and the third one is an HR round. This varies from company to company. Some may have a GD round, some may not even have an HR round. Some may have multiple technical rounds. They have multiple OT rounds as well and they might be resume shortlisting. There are many ways in which a company can, can go through phases, but it's mostly online test, technical interview and HR. That's how usually the trend is. Okay, and like this process is fixed for a company and it will be fixed across campuses? It will be fixed across campuses, but it might change from year to year, depending on, mm -hmm. you know, what their situation is, what their recruitment number is. If, if they have more number, they might not be as stringent, stringent but if they need to hire less people, they'll, do, they'll have more rounds to cut down. Mm -hmm. And so like the online test is something that most companies have and it's something that a lot of students actually fear. So can you talk a little bit about how you should be prepared for an online test? Uh, first of all, you need to figure out what kind of a company you're targeting and depending on that, you need to prepare for an online test. If you're targeting a core company, then they'll mostly ask you core related questions. They might not test you rigidly on your APT or quant. They might still have an aptitude and quant section, but they'll mostly look at your uh, technical score. But if you're targeting an analytical company, they'll look only at your uh, quant and verbal uh, situation. They'll, the only sections they have is aptitude and verbal. So depending on what you're targeting, you need to prep accordingly. Okay. And are there any resources that you'd recommend for studying from? For aptitude, I've noticed most of the analytic companies have ca directly give CAT questions. So I highly recommend go through CAT books, maybe the box standard books like Time or AS Academy. Those, those are the ones I, I referred to. They were pretty useful for me. So I guess I can recommend them. They they were they were a good source. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure you can get stuff online as well. You don't really have to buy the books if you're not giving cat any time soon. Okay, yeah. I've heard a lot of people use India Books. So I think that's a good resource too. Yeah, India Books. India Books has a good HR uh, archive. Like okay. they have answers to basic HR questions. They have multiple people saying, oh, this is what I answered. So maybe you can refer them and you know, make your own HR answer according. You'll have That's a reference nice. to look. I did not know that. <laughs> no, um, okay. good. Good. Yeah. So like you said, there are different roles that companies come from, come for. Um, so could you talk a little bit about what skill sets each of these roles demands? I mean, in general, of course, they will be more specific, but the general uh, technical and soft skills skill set okay so again depending on the profile you're looking at the uh, core in pure software i think i can i cannot talk about that i'll just talk about analytics because that what that's what i got into there are many roles in which an analytical, analytical company hires students it could be business analyst it could be data analyst it could be a uh, data engineer, which is what I am, or it could be a consultant. All of these uh, roles have different work once you get in, but the way in which they select all of these people are pretty much the same. They look at your, uh, they look at your soft skills, they check how good your communication skills are, and uh, they also check your aptitude in the online test. And most of the time, the interviews mostly have basic stuff like guess estimates or case studies. They don't really go into technical stuff, but it is good to have a basic knowledge about SQL, C++, maybe Python, or if you're interested in machine learning, maybe a little in that. So yeah, they might not expect you to know, they might not uh, deep dive into questions, but they expect you to know basic stuff like how to join two tables and, things like that. So I would suggest at least go through a beginner course in these languages. Just know the syntax of basic stuff, you'll be good to go. Okay. And also a lot of people ask this, how much do companies care about CGPA? And if you have a low CGPA, how do you make up for it? So what I've noticed is CGPA is the most important thing when when the company comes, like you have a threshold above which only you can apply. So if you cut, if you cross that threshold after that, CGPA is not really necessary. There are a few exceptions in which companies do CGPA shortlisting. There have been a few cases, but that is pretty rare. And that happens only when they have too many applicants and they don't have enough resources to take interviews for every single person. So I would say remove that exceptions, but if you have a CGPA of more than 6.5, you have nothing to worry about when it comes to analytic companies because most of them have 6.5 or 6 only, nothing more than that. And some companies don't even have a CGPA product. So CGPA doesn't really matter as much as it should. Mm -hmm. If you have more than 6.5, you're fine. It doesn't matter if you have 6.1 or 9.8. It's all the same. After that, they just look at your profile and your resume. Also, oh, uh, yeah. 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 So uh, you asked the question, uh, how do you make up for lower GPA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One way is to have a solid resume, have a lot of PORs, have a lot of uh, achievements or mm. projects. Basically show them that I'm not just my CGPA. I have leadership skills. I can manage people and time properly. That's what they're actually looking for anyway. They don't really, they don't really give that much importance to CGPA because that's not really a proper metric to measure one's now, one's knowledge any mm -hmm. so they know that as long as you have a solid resume you're fine so stuff like sports and music helps uh should you put hobbies yeah, on sure your you should definitely include extracurricular activities not just olympiads you won that will also show that you're not you have a life beyond numbers and you know data so that's a good thing to show that's definitely a good thing to show Okay. Um, also, your batch was, I think, the first batch to have given online interviews. 
and I think we're going to have the same thing this year. So do you have any specific tips for that from your experience or from your friend's experience? Uh, one really, really important thing you need to keep in check every single time you're, before you attend an interview is make sure you have a really strong internet connection. There might be cases in which you know unexpected stuff happens and Wi-Fi goes down or current goes and Wi-Fi gets disconnected. Always have a backup, keep your mobile data ready, keep it connected to your laptop, make sure you don't lose connection. Uh, as much as it's in your hands, try not to lose connection, but if in case it happens, things are out of hands and in some cases, just be calm, inform your coordinator, they'll handle it from there. That's, that's one thing, be calm when unexpected things happen because they do happen we are we are humans we make mistakes and sometimes you know destiny is like oh i'll throw some you know hard stuff at you we'll deal with it so yeah just keep your calm it's fine it will go on if not this company there's always an always a next company but yeah keep your calm that's that's really important um, also, so now we kind of have a clear idea about what companies look for and they make it plenty clear through their job descriptions and stuff. But do you think uh, what according to you are some criteria that students should look at to see if a company is the right fit for them or not? Okay, the most important thing is go through the job description. First, make sure you understand what the company is expecting of you. Then look at if you have those prerequisites mentioned. If you have and you're interested, then apply for the company. Don't go half prepared. So if, if there are two things that are mentioned in the prerequisite and you know one thing, they might ask you about the second because it's mentioned saying this is necessary to apply. So make sure you know what they're expecting of you and make sure you want to do that. So yeah, one important thing is go through the job description. Most of the companies give that, especially analytical companies. Core companies don't usually give that because they themselves don't know what they will be assigning to you after you get placed. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Nice. Analytical companies. So in general, what tips or words of wisdom would you have for anxious kids who are stepping into placement season? Okay, one important thing is that if you make a big mistake in your interview, it's okay because you are human, you make mistakes. The HR also knows that. What you do after making the mistake is the most important step. How you do damage control is what the HR actually judges you on. So if you do a mistake and then you get scared and then you ruin the entire interview after that, doesn't really show that you can think on on your feet and you know do damage control properly so make sure if you commit any mistake you realize that immediately apologize and move on don't don't think about that during the interview you can ponder on that after the interview doesn't matter but during the interview make sure you have a you have your game face on and smile and just just say your heart out you'll be fine Interviewer is wants, but <laughs> gotta do what yeah, you gotta do. That is that is I understand. I'm just trying to help out. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really good set of questions, Shruti. You answered all of them so well. I am definitely more clear about the upcoming placement season. So thank you for your time. And for inviting Nandini. This was a blast. And just to end on a note. All the best, everybody. I hope you get into great companies and I hope you get into what you want and not what you think you want. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, share and subscribe. <laughs>